Aha! Hi everyone. In this lecture, we're going to go over the null hypothesis versus alternative hypothesis and how is it used in a clinical study in relationship to the alpha and p value. So first of all, let's understand what null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis is. So first of all, null hypothesis, the null, this itself, null, mean no or none. So in a clinical study, basically what happened, researcher are trying to prove that the new medication they're developing is basically better than an existing medication that is already in the market or it's better than a placebo. So let's take an example. Let's say we have medication. So we have medication X. And researcher are trying to prove that this medication X is better than a placebo or it's better than a medication in the market. So this is what the researcher wants. And what the null hypothesis, H0, in this case, says, so H0, the null hypothesis, in this case, says that this is actually not true. So what it says is that this medication which is in this case medication X is basically not better than the placebo or not better than or not better than the medication that already exists in the market. So that's what the null hypothesis says in this case. And what the researchers are trying to do, basically, they're trying to do one thing. They're trying to disprove or reject. So what the researchers are trying to do, they're trying to reject H0, which is the null hypothesis, or disprove the null hypothesis. Because if they are able to disprove or reject the null hypothesis, this means the medication, and in this case we have the same medication, we're still talking about medication X in this case, is basically better than placebo or the drug in the market. So it's better than placebo. or medication in the market. So, that's what the researchers are trying to do. And in this way, null hypothesis says it's not. So what is the alternative hypothesis in this case? The alternative hypothesis, what it says, basically that this medication is good. And still talking about medication X in this case, it's basically better than the placebo or the drug in the market. So they're basically 
the alternative hypothesis, that's what it says. So what the researcher are trying to do in this case, so let me just continue this. So here it says better than placebo. or medication in the market. So what the researchers are trying to do in this case, they're trying to approve or accept the alternative hypothesis. That's what they are trying to do, basically, the acceptance of alternative hypothesis, because this support what they're trying to do, which is the medication they're developing is better than a placebo or the one in the market. The reason why, because if their medication gets approved, then they can put it on the market and sell it and, of course, make money out of it. And on the other side, help patient with their medication, as has been proven that it's better than a placebo or the one that already exists in the market. So how does all this play gets into play when it comes into alpha or the p-value? So previously I did cover a standard deviation and I did say that a standard deviation when we have a curve Median mode and the median all have the same value. So all have same value. And this is only true when we have a normally distributed curve. And we said for this to happen, we need a large population or a large sample of people that are participating in the study. So all of them have the same value. And we did say, I did cover also that one standard deviation, so SD is a standard deviation, one standard deviation is basically 68%, which means there is 34% over here and 34% over here. And I did also say that Second standard deviation is 95%. So this is basically cover the area from here all the way to here. This is a second standard deviation. And the third standard deviation would be 98%. So this is third standard deviation and this is 98%. So 98% will cover from here all the way to here. And this is also third standard deviation. So alpha, so let's use this. What is alpha? Alpha is basically the maximum error margin. So when the researcher, so, Basically, that's its max error margin. So what, is, what does that mean? What does that mean? Basically, when researchers are developing the clinical study, trying to prove that the medication is better than a placebo or the one that is in the market, they allow an error, max error margin in the study to happen. And basically this alpha is the max error margin and it's basically set by the researcher. And usually what they set it up to be 5%. So there is a room of 5% of error to happen in the study. And this is what they set it up to. So basically the tails of this curve is the alpha. So starting from here all the way to here, so if we say 5% is allowed, then 95% is basically covered. So in this case, from here, from second standard deviation, all the way up to here, this is 2.5%. And from here, 
all the way to the end is another 2.5%. And that would be the 5%. Some studies or researcher can actually make this also 1%. The reason we, they would make it 1% is basically to really make their medication look better than, let's say, placebo or medication in the market. However, this is really rarely happens. The reason why, we need a very, very large sample. Many participants, many patients to be participating in this study. And in addition, it requires money, it requires time, and it requires a lot of things in order to make it the margin, the error margin, 1%. So usually, in most cases, you'll see it 5% or you'll see alpha, which is equal to 0 0.05. So this is alpha over here. This whole section over here and this whole section is alpha as well. And we said it's 2.5 and 2.5 over here to make it 5%. And the p-value is basically calculated from the result in the study. So, what do we wanna know? So, basically when we calculate the p-value, we wanna know if the p-value is basically, so if the p-value is, let's make it over here, so, Actually, let's stick to blue. So if the p-value, p-value is less than alpha, so in this case, it's gonna be less than 0 0.05, which is 5%. Then in this case, what we're we gonna do, we're going to reject the null hypothesis or disapprove the null hypothesis. So in this case, reject null hypothesis. Or basically H naught. Because we were when we have a p-value that is basically less than the alpha. In this case, we're basically saying that our medication is superior to the placebo or the medication in the market that already exists. That's what this says. However, so this is case number one. This is one of the options. So option number two would be if P value is equal or bigger than alpha, So if it's bigger or equal to alpha, which is 0.05, 5%, then in this case, researchers are not able to reject the null hypothesis. So it's going to say fail to reject. which is basically fail to reject null hypothesis. Which is H naught. Fail to reject, they could not reject the null hypothesis in this case. So be careful, if you're taking an exam preparation for examination when it comes into a null hypothesis. If it says fail to reject, it's the same thing as we're accepting the null hypothesis in this case. They couldn't reject it. They failed to do that. In this case, what this means, basically, it means that the medication is not better than the placebo or better than the one already exists in the market. And it could be many reasons. It could be side effect or many other reasons for that to be rejected. So there are only two options in this case. It's either less than the alpha or bigger or equal to alpha in this case. So this is it for this lecture. If you have any question or comment, please leave them in the comments below. 
and as always thank you for watching